Welcome to our lecture online. Is it possible to turn an object, which is a metal sphere that is neutral, into a metal sphere that is negatively charged with another object, another metal sphere that has an excess of positive charge in it? Is it possible that we can turn that first metal sphere into a negatively charged sphere without actually touching the two spheres together? And the answer is yes. The way to do that is to first go ahead and bring the metal sphere B much closer to A so that there's a much stronger influence on the charges on A. At this point, A still is neutral because it has just as many positive charges as it has negative charges. But what will happen by bringing the two close together is that the negative charges, which at first are evenly distributed in sphere A, they will be pulled towards the positive charges on B and you'll have an excess charge on the side of A that is closer to B. So this side will become more negatively charged while therefore since those negative charges have moved away from the left side towards the right side will leave the left side more positively charged. Then the next step would be to connect the left side of the sphere A to ground. Now what that means is that you take a wire so that there's the ability to conduct charges across that wire and if you stick it into a ground that has an infinite amount of positive and negative charges then what happens is you'll have this side of the sphere still negatively charged you'll have this side of the sphere still positively charged but these positive charges on the left side of the sphere will attract the negative charges that are in the ground. And so all these excess of negative charges, well actually they're not an excess of negative charges because there should be just as many positive charges as there are negative charges in the ground, but since there's so many of them, some of the negative charges will be pulled towards the positive charges on this side of the sphere and start flowing along the conductor towards the sphere thus cancelling out these charges. These charges, negative charges, will pile up onto sphere A because they're attracted to these positive charges. At that point, after a number of these negative charges have flow, flowed onto the sphere, you then break open the circuit so no more charges can come across this, this path. And then, since now you have additional negative charges, more negative charges and positive charges on A, the whole sphere will now be presumably negatively charged more of them will still be attracted to the positive side uh, or to the sphere B, so the, on the right side of A because we have sphere B there that will be attracting more negative charges, but the whole sphere A will not be negatively charged because there's more negative charges than positive charges. Then when you take sphere B and move it far away again, then these negative charges will then evenly distribute themselves around A because they attract each other, they not attract but repel each other and now we have a nicely charged sphere A, negatively charged sphere A without ever having touched B and A together. Of course if you actually touch them together that wouldn't help you because then some of the positive charges will leak onto the sphere A and then when you pull them apart then both spheres would be positively charged which was not what we're trying to do, we we're trying to make A negatively charged. So it's kind of cheating a little bit because we did have to connect A to the ground to find more negative charges. But that's how it's done.